Hi, and thanks for listening to Gossip with Celebrity, where we talk about entertainment news, celebrity gossip, fashion, and royals. This week is a special episode of our podcast, which we recorded earlier to give us more time to cover the Oscars. We'll be back with our regular format talking about the news next week. Chandra and I started off by talking about Kim Kardashian's plastic surgery and the fact that she claims not to have had a nose job. I also include a segment from my interview with Christy Puchko at Pajiba. We both love holiday romance movies and we bonded over that. There's a talk I had with my boyfriend Dave about A Star is Born right after we watched it. Finally, Chandra and I give our reviews of The Favorite and Can You Ever Forgive Me? Those are virtually spoiler free. We just talk about some plot points that you can see in the trailers. I'm Katie, the founder and editor of Celebrity.com, and I write as Celebrity. Hi, and I'm Chandra. I write as Kaiser, and I'm the head writer for Celebrity. So here's our talk about Kim Kardashian's plastic surgery. She teaches a master class on makeup, and she said in her master class that everyone always thinks that she had a nose job, but she didn't. She never has had a nose job. And everyone's like, bitch, really? <laughs> Remember when she said that she didn't have butt implants and she got her butt x-rayed or something to prove that she didn't have butt implants? Yeah. But really, she just has fat implants in her butt. So, of course, it's not going to show that on an x-ray. I don't you even don't know. get that butt. I don't understand why she doesn't say, yeah, you know, I'm half plastic. <laughs> At this point, I don't even spend any time thinking about her ass. I do think about her boobs a lot, though. because. Do you think about her boobs a lot? (laughs) Because her implants looked really bad. They do. Have you noticed that? They look really uncomfortable and gross. Well, that dress she wore to the Amphar Gala, I was looking at the photos to make the picture of her face side by side, and you could see half her nipple in in that dress. It was not a flattering dress, and it made her her already fake-looking chest look extra gross. It did. We don't see her ass that much. If you watch the video clips of her on Keeping Up With The Kardashians, because we're not watching that crap. Somebody must be. (laughs) But it's like uh, the staple. It's on constantly on E. Her butt looks just huge. It's like two butts in one. Like... (laughs) And so I don't think about it much, but yeah, when I see it, I'm like, whoa, how is that attractive? As for her face, it is really difficult to even figure out exactly what has changed because so much has changed. One of those Real Housewives, and I can't say which one because they all kind of blend together, (laughs) is... (laughs) Except for some of the Beverly Hills women who are like working hard to distinguish themselves. One of them had what they call a liquid facelift, which is just Botox and fillers. And you get enough of that shit and it shifts everything up and it changes the shape of your face. And I think that's what she did. I could see that. I also think that she's had like chin work and like stuff for double chin. I definitely think that she's had that kind of stuff. (laughs) Yes, the so, sucking the fat out of the chin, sucking the fat out of around the eyes, I guess, is a thing. I remember when Susan Sarandon said she did that. Yes, I'm sure she's had everything. But sure, you didn't have a nose job, Kim. Great. Just cling to that. The more I do this job, I realize that I don't even understand half of the plastic surgery procedures out there. Like, I don't really understand what they do, I like what the surgeons do, and then I don't really understand what the surgery is supposed to do to someone's face, like how it's supposed to look. I'll Google it. And I don't (laughs) recommend necessarily that you Google it if you're crazy. But there are a lot of crazy things they Mm. can do to your face. And maybe if we watched that botched or one of those. I cannot watch that show. It upsets me too much. I can't either. I can't either. (laughs) It really does. It upsets me too much because I don't watch... (laughs) surgery shows. I don't like watching that kind of stuff. It it really grosses me out and usually makes me nauseous. It's hard to watch. My mom and I were watching that Dr. Pimple Popper. No, I can't watch that either. Cannot. (laughs) (laughs) It's hard. It's like a train wreck. You can't turn away. You're like, oh my gosh, get that out. A lot of women, I think, get little things done here and there. Like, I'm sure, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm sure Meryl Streep and Glenn Close have had small things done, but they don't go overboard and you can't really tell the obvious difference. We notice the bad work. 
whenever I think of like someone who's had very subtle, very good work is Sharon Stone. I think she's like the gold standard. Oh, that's a good point. She looks amazing. Yeah, she looks amazing. She looks her age, but she looks really great for her age. My mom will not mind me saying this because I've said it on the site, but she had a facelift and she doesn't get injections and she looks great. She doesn't look like, oh my God, perfection. She looks like, wow, that that's a good looking older lady. I think if you just get one surgery or a couple little surgeries here and there and you don't get constant injections and you're not looking pulled and taut, that's the look that everybody wants to achieve. But we see the bad work and it's kind of scary to us. You know who I think has surprisingly bad work? Her money is her face and she has the money to really get great work is Giselle. I think she's had really bad work because you can tell. You can tell how... I think I just ignore Giselle, so I haven't really looked too much at her face. But she's too young. She's younger than us. If she has visible work done, that's way too young. It's that she has visible work and that she looks so different. Yes. She was hiding in that burqa to get (laughs) the doctor's office in Paris. That was one of the craziest stories of that. That's fun. Whenever that happened. (laughs) And that was right around the time of Ben Affleck and Christine What's-Her-Face. and the nanny. Oh my gosh, that was a fun story. In the fourth episode of Gossip with Celebrity, I included part of my talk with Christy Puchko at Pajiba. She's a movie reviewer and writer, and I love to read her takes on movies. She recommended that we watch Serenity, the movie with Matthew McConaughey and Anne Hathaway, and I did watch it after that, and I loved it, if you might remember. In this excerpt from our talk, we are discussing holiday rom-coms and how we love them. Not ironically, we just like to watch those movies. She recommends a crazy Netflix rom-com, and after I talked to her, I watched it, and I'm going to include my review after this. So I'm really excited to get to interview you because I love to read your takes on movies because we have the same take on almost every movie. Oh, even movies that are supposed to be trashy, like Princess Switch. <laughs> you like that? I like that too. I, I often say people go, "Oh, but do you like it?" Ironically, like, no, I don't like anything. Ironically, I just <laughs> might have bad taste, but I'm fine with that. So and you nailed it that they had bad cakes in that movie too. Oh, that was so upsetting. It's on Netflix. <laughs> like, get your shit together. You guys know how to do this. You make beautiful shows about beautiful food. That was, right? Oh, it was such a missed opportunity. Just give me beautiful cakes. Like they were all clearly made of cardboard. And they were supposed to be in Europe, and the Christmas decorations were not right for Europe. The princess no. one, the other princess Netflix movie that they played within this. Netflix yeah. movie. <laughs> Got the decorations right, but this one didn't. Yeah, but that one doesn't get like the royal clothing right either. Do a rent the runway. You can get really nice looking clothing. Right? It's so distressing to me. I don't mind a low budget rom com, but you got to get the fashion right. That is such a part of those movies. Exactly. It's- Yes. Uh, vexing. <laughs> Did you watch the second one? Because I tried to watch the second one and my mom and I turned one. it off. Yes. They had that stupid party planner and that's where I noped out of that movie. Yeah. I was like trying to watch it to do a review for it. Even though I have watched some really terrible Netflix movies to review them, I was just like, it is the Christmas season and I deserve better. So I shut it off. Uh, Princess, what was that one even called? Like the the Christmas wedding? The Christmas wedding, I yes, think? Yes. Yeah. Christmas uh, wedding something. Woof. Yeah. I was so excited for it, too. And my mom and I, we watched all those crappy, not crappy. Some of them are good. We watched those Hallmark Christmas yeah. movies together. Did you see the one? I don't know if you did a review of it. The, it was like the Christmas calendar and it had Cat Graham in it. Yeah, I did see that one. I think that one's cute. My favorite is probably Christmas. I think it's called In the Christmas Spirit or Christmas Spirit. And it's literally about like a dead ghost who uh, <laughs> can only appear for the 12 days of Christmas. And of course, that's when he finds this realtor who is like very into her job. But he looks like a okay. hipster bartender. So they fall in love. And you're and, <laughs> gotta see but like, it's not just about them falling in love. It's also about them solving his murder from like 1923. It's... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's so good. I throw a Christmas party every year at my home, and I threw, told people about this movie, and they're like, well, we're watching it, right? So then we put it on closed captions as everyone's like having cocktails <laughs> and hanging out. They're also watching this movie about the Christmas ghost who was murdered on his way back to his fiance, who was maybe pregnant with another man's baby. There was like a lot going on in that one. I am so sold on yeah, this movie. Right. I want to watch it tonight. <laughs> The movie that Christy was talking about is called The Spirit of Christmas. It is on Netflix now, so you can watch it whenever you would like to watch it. It is crazy. I think that she loved it just because the premise is so bold. Somehow there is a ghost who takes corporeal, is that the right word, form and becomes solid for 12 days of Christmas. They never really explain that. I don't want to give any spoilers. But yeah, you know what happens in those movies. It's a holiday romance movie. So he falls in love with the woman who came to evaluate the inn and ended up staying longer than she expected to. And of course, this ghost is super hot. It was fun. It's the kind of movie you can watch while you're doing something else like writing, tweeting, knitting. You don't have to pay full attention to it. And it it was fun. I enjoyed it. And I would recommend it. What the hell? And this is the talk that I had with my boyfriend, Dave, after we both watched A Star is Born. Now, Chandra and I talked about this movie in the fourth episode of our podcast. So you may notice that I do say a couple of the same points that I made there, but I still think this is interesting. And I hope you do, too. Hi, I'm here with Dave, and we just watched A Star is Born. And we were making fun of the same moments, and we were laughing at the same moments that were supposed to be dramatic. It wasn't bad. We're not going to give any spoilers. Right. We're going to just discuss general moments in the film. But Oscar nod, really, for that movie? I mean, and <laughs> it, felt, it didn't feel like a complete movie. It just felt like a series of different scenes, and you couldn't always tell the timeline, and it, it was really disjointed. You told me it kind of felt like The Doors. Just in that way that it was, but the, it was and in the doors. That? It, that was Oliver Stone. That was um, okay. It was very purposeful in the doors. He wanted to try to make it feel like an acid trip or something. Yeah, you know, I felt like maybe Bradley Cooper started to approach that with this, but I don't. Okay. I'm not sure that I was intentional. It did feel that way, and and there was like a random cameo by what was his name, Dave, Dave Chappelle. Chappelle. That scene was like shoehorned in. They didn't explain how he got there. There were lots of scenes. It was where awfully late to introduce a new character. A, a new character. Yeah. It was. It was way. It was in the middle, almost dead in the middle of the movie. And it was like, oh, here's this new character. And then, but I guess you know he didn't last very long. He had <laughs> maybe three lines, I think. He had know. a purpose. Yeah. We won't reveal the purpose, but the, right, right. My favorite character, and I was telling you, I didn't buy the love story. They didn't seem to have much chemistry together, and. I didn't really care what happened to anybody. Like there weren't any characters where I was like, wow, I don't want that person to right. do poorly. Right, Bra- well, Bradley Cooper's character was drunk most of the time. Right. And, and mumbling most of the time <laughs> yeah. on top of that, you know. And then, <laughs> and and then when Dave, Dave Chappelle shows up, they're both mumbling through the scene. I could barely understand them, but anyway. We anyways. had the captions on, so that helped. Right. But um, yeah, I don't, we didn't, we both didn't like it. And I, I told you that I wrote that about you is that I like that we both dislike the same <laughs> <Right>. movie. <laughs> and we were laughing at the same scenes that were supposed to be dramatic. Um, right. Where they were it supposed to be to romantic. Yeah, it just didn't. Well, there was the one. What did he say? Well, that's good or something. She's like, only for you. And you're like, that's good. <laughs> Yeah, some parts were a little too real. It's like, I know that guy. I, I know that oh. drunk guy from the bar. He seems like <laughs> some redneck guy. At a, right. He'd meet at a bar, but it, it, he never got beyond that for me. I mean. No, I didn't care what happened to him at all. Or Lady Gaga, I, Allie, or whatever. Right, Allie. And I didn't. Character. And then she had that manager, and it just. Nobody was a full character except maybe his brother, and his brother was in just a few scenes, and that's just because Sam Elliott was so good. And you made that joke like it's the only time he's ever cried. Right. When it, when I, I can't think of another time I've seen Sam Elliott cry. I mean, he's he's had to have been in at least a hundred movies, and and I was like, oh, so I'm getting old. It's time for an Oscar. I'm gonna cry in this movie. Here he was we go. a good cry. It was a good cry. It didn't stick with me. There aren't any scenes where I'm like, there was one scene when they first met and they, she was singing to him up in the parking lot of the grocery store. And that yeah. was kind of meaningful because it was the first time she was singing her song to him. Right, right. And that was nice. And then 
they went and performed the song like at a concert without practicing at all and it was like fully formed. right well we talked about that it's <laughs> sort of a fantasy but i mean the same thing happens in musicals but yeah this wasn't a musical although it did have a very <laughs> musical theme to it but it sort of reminded me of Crazy Heart, Jeff Bridges' movie. Yeah, we write about the yes. title of that. We talked about. We that. did talk. Yeah. We write about the title with Maggie uh, okay. Gyllenhaal too. Right, right. So it sort of had that same um, motif a- going aging, on. The, the aging rock has been star, rock yeah. slash country star, or whatever. alcoholic, alcoholic. You have to go through this alcoholic, drug-addled <laughs> <laughs> lifestyle in order to be authentic. That was another theme in the in the movie. That I thought. Are they trying to make this like pop versus rock and one's more oh, authentic than the other? Oh, I didn't other, even think or, of that because but, it just seems so superficial. Like, right, it's like, it's, what, is, what does that matter? Right. I mean, they sort of hinted at that, but it never really resolved. It was Nothing like, is that what you're going for? Deep. Nothing right. felt meaningful except his relationship with his brother. Maybe. Well, you know, there was the theme, the, the, the song about being shallow. We're, we're far from oh, the shallow end, maybe. Like, oh. well, this uh, everything except oh, for this movie. Oh, his dad. You know what I just thought? <laughs> what? Remember how he said his dad died and his body washed away? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, in the rainy season. <laughs> that must have oh, that something was something to do with that. Yeah, that right? was supposed to be uh, that unintentionally funny moment, I think. Or maybe it was meant to be. <laughs> maybe that had to do with the shallow song. If we dug deeper. <laughs> if we dug I deeper. Buried him a little bit deeper. <laughs> wouldn't have washed away. I've been dying to talk to you about the favorite. Yes, me too. Um, I'll let you go. I'll let you go first. We both watched The Favorite this week with Olivia Coleman, Rachel Weiss, and am I pronouncing her name right? Yeah, Rachel Weiss. And Emma Stone. Emma Stone. And Joe Alwyn and Nicholas Holt. Yes. I loved it. <laughs> I thought it was dark and weird and amazing. It was not a typical you know, royal biopic. It was not, oh, these are grand people doing grand things. But it was still great. The costumes were amazing. The direction was so weird. I liked the fishbowl quality. Oh, they had those fisheye shots. Yes. Yeah. I loved every performance. I thought the three women were absolutely amazing. Rachel, Emma, and Olivia were all knocking it out of the park. I would be happy if any or all of them won, honestly. They were all really good. They did great. I didn't love it. Oh, really? No, I didn't love it. I thought, okay, the writing was funny and good and trashy. Mm -hmm. I like that aspect of it. I like the sniping and the ridiculousness of it. It felt like a series of different scenes, some better than others. Some were really good. Some were funny. It just felt like they were trying to make it more ridiculous, and it it didn't hang together for me. And I didn't oh. like the fisheye, and I didn't like the, the camera whipping around and the perspective under people's faces. I guess it was just too bizarre for me. See, I liked that. It could have been a really boring, uninteresting movie if they had just shot it straight and, That's and tried to tell a very straight story. I liked how weird it was. I think that's what made it a really great movie. I like their makeup, too. Uh, yeah, the makeup was great. The costumes, the costumes were and the setting was beautiful. Can I just say, I was really impressed with Emma Stone. She, like, legitimately stole scenes away from Rachel Weisz and Olivia Coleman. I thought. She was a good actress. She was good in it, yes. And I liked the trajectory of her character. Mm-hmm. I don't want to she give away clever. spoilers. Yes, I liked her character. She outplayed everyone. And there was that one line where Rachel Weisz's character was like, we're not playing the same game. Yeah. Like, I'm ruthless, but I, you are beyond. <laughs> you know? It was fun. It was good. It's not best picture for me. Some of the performances are very deserving, though. Yeah, it's not best picture for me either. I would be very happy with any of those women won big awards and they did rachel and olivia both won baftas so that makes me very happy and olivia won the golden globe nice the oscar's probably gonna go to glenn close as we already discussed but it, it would be okay if she won it too yeah she was great i don't even know how they got her face to do that stuff in the later scenes in the movie 
Okay, I'm going to try not to do spoilers. She had like Bell's palsy going on. You can fake that. <laughs> you can. No, you can. I, and I've actually legitimately had Bell's palsy where I couldn't feel half my face and it has drooped like that. You can fake it. I don't know if you need to have known what it felt like, but you can like push your mouth down and fake it with your eye and stuff. So maybe she was. I thought it was amazing <laughs> what she was doing with her face. That was cool. Well, I looked into the historical accuracy of the film and Ooh, good. <laughs> the actual power dynamics between Sarah and the Queen and Emma Stone's character, those power dynamics were real. I'm glad you looked it up because it occurred to me to look it up, but I didn't bother. So <laughs> Well, the historians believe that there probably was not a lot of lesbianism in this particular royal court, but other than the lesbian stuff, the power dynamics were probably pretty similar. Okay. We also both saw the movie with Melissa McCarthy and Richard Grant. Richard E. Grant, yeah. <laughs> Richard E. Grant. <laughs> uh, can you ever forgive me? Where Melissa, it's set in the 90s and it tells the true story of a woman who was a biographer who was struggling in her career. She's an alcoholic and she starts forging letters from literary figures. That was a fun movie. I really like that movie. I did too. I, first of all, I loved how 90s it was. <laughs> yes. It felt so good. It felt so comfortable to me to like see people playing around with typewriters and <laughs> <laughs> actually going to bookstores and not ordering stuff on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. It felt so comfortable. I thought Melissa was great. She was. The script could have been funnier, I thought. But I understand that they were a little bit constrained by the true story. And I thought Richard E. Grant was the scene stealer. He was. I like how it was subtly funny and they didn't overplay their hand. Mm -hmm. They had some really good lines, particularly in the bar. And you're like, oh, that was a good line. But it wasn't Marvel movie level funny, like ridiculous. It was mm -hmm. how people would actually talk. And you really cared about the character. I wanted to see what happened to her. I want to read the book now because it really interested me. It was a great movie, and I enjoyed it a lot. It was cute. Yeah, I think Melissa and Richard both earned their Oscar nominations. I don't think they that did. they're going to win anything, but I think they deserve to be nominated across the board, and they were. So I'm very happy for them. Me too, and I'm going to have a good time watching them on Oscar night because they're so cute together. Yeah, they seem to really enjoy each other and really get along. Richard E. Grant is having a, the best time. He is quirky and he leans right into it and he posts a ton of videos and stuff. And he was on Ellen's with Melissa and Melissa said that he smells people like a dog does. And he <laughs> did this to Ellen. And he said, he, oh, I'll always remember that. And I was like, that is weird. I have never known anybody who just goes and smells people like it's a thing. That's his thing. He's a quirky guy. <laughs> <laughs> So this next section is just Shonda and me messing around about how we're going to say goodbye. We recorded this in the third episode, and I thought it was cute, and I wanted to put it here at the end. So thanks for listening. So can you, also, Shonda, can you be like, okay, thanks for joining us or something? <laughs> right, thanks for joining us, bitches. <laughs> we'll be back next week. No, <laughs> Was that stupid? Did I that don't sound know. Stupid for a sign say, off? You can sign say off. It. My bitches, my bitches. <laughs> I'm not going to say my bitches. Thanks for listening, bitches. You sound bitches. like you're on one of those rom-coms. Thanks for listening, bitches. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this Love Bitchy podcast. If you could please rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, or your platform of choice, it will really help us, and we appreciate it a lot. You can call us and leave a voicemail at 434-218-3219. Our website is celebrity.com, and we're also on Twitter under that handle and on Instagram as Celebrity Official. Thanks again. <laughs>